Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chamber. Z Chambers. This morning I'm looking at a special book. It's not a law book. Um, normally I do law books. I do a few uh, literary books as well but, and novels and so forth. But this one's particularly important and one that I wanted to review because this is the anniversary, the 100th anniversary at this time of the Battle of the Somme, which was an appalling conflict by any standards. This book is about the Great War, and it's about footballers in the Great War. The title is When the Whistle Blows. It's this book here. We'll have a look at it. It's got a subtitle, The Story of the Footballers' Battalion in the Great War. This is the centennial edition. It's been um, written and modified and sort of revised by Andrew Riddock and John Kemp. And there's an excellent forward by Gordon Taylor, um, who many of you will know. I've met him in the past and had dealings with him. Uh, from the Footballers uh, Union, Trade Union. Now I've given the uh, title of uh, the review this, A Beautifully Researched History of the Courageous 17th Middlesex Pals, the Fine Footballers Battalion. And that's what it is. It's a sad book, this book, without any doubt. Most books about the First War are. Um, let's look at the book first and then we'll talk about the review. There's some very, a lot of illustrations. There's the front of the book. And then there's the spine. And then on the back, you've got detail about how the battalion was formed and what happened. And as I say, you've got some... Uh, it's, it runs to 400-odd pages. There's a great deal of detail in the index. There's a list of all of the people who officers and men of the 17th Middlesex. It's been brilliantly researched, this book. Then you've got a whole series of information about people. It is a book about people, um, footballers. This is the front, and then you've got um, the actual title there, and you've got a little poster, and then you've got a dedication, which I particularly liked. I'm going to read it. It says, Dedication to Lance Sergeant Archie Strike, F Stroke 311, Compositor, Referee and Soldier, Killed in Action, 13th of November, 1916, touching uh, dedication. Then you've got the contents. This book first appeared and was published by other publishers and has been published now by Create Space. Now, the acknowledgements are very detailed because um, Andrew and John have put a lot of effort into this book. Uh, and Andrew has uh, given a sort of update on the, um, the 15th of December uh, 2014 which is obviously the, as I say, the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the First War. And then Gordon has produced, again, a very useful um, forward to the new edition. But I want to also draw attention to Richard Holmes, who I met, one, another wonderful guy. I met him when he was in the army. Um, alas, he's no longer with us. But there is a quote which I shall um, move on to later on. But do read his forward to the 2008 edition, because Richard was always spot on with what he said. Then there's a, pro, um, a prologue talking about a football match which took place in April 1914, prior to the beginning of the war. And then you've got notes on British military organisations. So, yeah, British military organisation, very important because, I mean, I'm, I served in the army, so I'm, I'm aware of what BAO is, British Army Organisation is. But what it is, it sets out what, what, what we mean by an army, a corps, a division, a brigade, a battalion, and so on. It's actually the structure. How many people are in the army group all the way down? And that's quite important for people who are, would not be familiar with um, the words we use in the army. Uh, for instance, battalion headquarters, brigade headquarters, divisional headquarters, and so on. Now, this then starts uh, talking about the greater game. When football first started, we blame it on the Romans. <laughs> then there are lots of photographs all the way through the book and you can see here a lot of people um, photographed, all of course now gone as time goes on and there we are running all the way through. And as I say the, the sources and bibliography are admirable all the way through. This is a book I will treasure. I'm delighted that Andrew asked me to review this and I'm just going to say a little bit about what I think of the book. Um, the sickness of heart, which one feels when receiving news of a bereavement, runs through this brilliantly and extensively researched book on a special part of the Great War's PALS battalions, 
the people of the footballers' battalions, or battalion rather. Now Andrew Riddick and John Kemp have produced a challenging picture of the footballing lives lost a hundred years ago in their updated work When the Whistle Blows. Now there are other titles, there are other books of the same title, but this one is, is one of them, and obviously it's got a subtitle specifically mentioning the footballer's battalion. The authors have updated this special um, history, it's a military history, for the centenary of this terrible war, and I'm reviewing the title, uh, as I say, on the anniversary of the Battle of the Somme, and I wrote it round about the, the, the day itself, and it's a special tribute to all those who died on that terrible morning. Much will continue, of course, to be said and written of the Great War as we now look at the conflict historically because the participants have all gone from the field. And I found this book incredibly sad to read for two reasons. Uh, my great uncle, my uncle served in a PALS battalion and was killed in action. And I've also served in the British Army, so I have a very small understanding, well, not much, of course, of what it must have been like, although as a volunteer myself, my motivation was, like the footballers, uh, almost different from conscripted men. I've also been a footballer of sorts, that's a laugh, <laughs> as will all my uh, generation um, have had to do, and of course, although I'm very tall, never been a game that much interested me until I read this book and saw the special life of the ball which these men all shared. I, I have to watch the football, it's on television all the time, but I, it's not something I normally follow. But I do recognise that anybody who's a sportsman has that particular eye. It's the same with um, using a weapon, you've got an eye for the uh, target. So it is that special facility that not everybody of course has. Now football, or soccer, as the Yanks call it, reigns as the greatest of all our games of sport played across the globe, so this book is a fitting tribute to all the keen-eyed men who gave their lives for their country from such a special and quite wide group of sportsmen. And my sadness is tinged with the special waste of life associated with these particularly talented people, although one could write that of any specific group who died in World War I. We've got the poets, we've got a whole group of different people all of whom were involved in that terrible international uh, conflict. Now, the excellent Richard Holmes, who I mentioned earlier, wrote in 2008, quoting the authors, that the spirit of the professional players, amateurs and club enthusiasts within the ranks of the battalion made a lasting impression on everyone who encountered it. And it would have been the camaraderie. There's always going to be that in any unit, but there was probably something special. Holmes sums it up for me with, by saying that this is a beautifully researched history of a fine battalion and a lasting tribute to men who remained true to their salt when the whistle blew, not on manicured uh, greenswood, but in a muddy trench. And Richard always put it so well. Another splendid and sensitive comment about this book comes from Gordon Taylor, who says they paid the ultimate sacrifice and we will remember them as the book fully illustrates why it will be impossible to forget such heroes, and Gordon's absolutely right. And remembering these brave and skilled men is the lasting legacy of Riddick and uh, Kemp's studious work, with its excellent and careful chapter footnotes, and the book should find its way, we think, into most football clubhouses in the land as a memorial to football and footballers. One can, of course, but hope and of that time in history, and possibly for today's fans to ponder their hero's courage at that time after what they get up to sometimes. And it's such sad imagery that when the army's whistle was blown and the grappling up the trench wall started as they went over the top, it was not like going out into the floodlit arena, but to no man's land for their country and not their team and to the noise of a barrage and whistle, and not to cheers. And I think that's important to remember. And from their research, Riddick and Kemp were able to make contact with the new generations whose forebears fought for today's freedoms. We often ignore how evil the Kaiser 
and the earlier versions of the Gestapo were in the Great War. And I think this is a useful reminder. So when the whistle blows is not merely a tribute and an historic account of some very brave and special men, whose like we will probably not see again, there's a final special word from Major Buckley of the 17th Middlesex when he says, I feel I cannot say too much for them, always cheerful and willing, and the first to volunteer for anything. And again, that's the Major, the OC commanding, um, the company, uh, setting it out very clearly. Let me conclude by saying that that was the way it was then and has been since and many um, and may well have to be again uh, should we face what the first war British footballers faced, something we all hope will never ever happen again. Here's the book, nice pictures on the front. You see from, there's the spine, you see from the back such a large number of football clubs were involved. Of course, everybody was involved. And you can see all the names of the people. And it's nice to see, this is history. It's a social history as much as anything else, although this is military. But it's about something which is very, very important to very large numbers of people. It's the final whistle that explains what's happened towards the end. And these are some of the uh, memorials to the people concerned. Most people love football. And I think this book is a great um, tribute. There's a Spurs player mentioned there. So you've got quite a lot, and I'm not picking any particular clubs, you would understand. So I get Bright Brighton and the Hove Albion as well, just, just to balance it. And here is the front again. And as I say, I'm very grateful to Andrew and John for um, producing this book. And what must have been a huge amount of work. And it's useful too with the 17th Middlesex to at least give them a little bit of um, a little bit of a, uh, an advertisement for what they did because it's a special unit so thank you very much to all concerned it was a nice tribute to do this review and uh, made me think thank you very much to all concerned anyway bye bye